Blue drivers, is your car overheating? Did you use your blue driver to pull a P0128 or a P1258? Did you notice coolant leaking from your car? If so, it could be your water pump. This is a fix that you should definitely not fear, but there is some serpentine belt action in here that you may be intimidated by. Chris is gonna show you how simple that is. Chris. This is an easy job, no special tools. You can do it in your garage or in your driveway. Uh, before we get started, we are going to move a couple of things out of the way, like the battery. This will just give you some more room to work, and it will make your life way easier. So we're going to get to it. We're going to see if we can prevent our knuckles from getting busted on this one, and get the car back on the road. Here's the tools you'll need to change your water pump. A socket wrench and the following sockets. 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 13 millimeter, and 15 millimeter. A 3 8 inch breaker bar. A pan, of course the coolant a funnel, and a tarp for the mess. All right, so step one is to drain the coolant out of the car. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the coolant fill cap and put it aside. To drain the radiator, we're going to loosen the petcock on the radiator, which is on the passenger side near the bottom, right down here. So Chris, do you need to drain all the coolant? Not necessarily. Uh, on this car, the water pump is about halfway up the engine block. So we don't need to drain everything out, but uh, this is kind of an old car. It used to be a rental. It was probably abused. So we're going to drain all the coolant and just put some new stuff in. While the coolant's draining, we can start taking out the battery, uh, the fuse box. We can move the coolant bottle, and that'll give us some more room to access the water pump. So first, we have two 10 millimeter bolts on the battery. Once that's loose, you can just wiggle on the negative terminal and pull it off and just push it away off to the side. Next, we'll do the positive, pull it loose, and push it off to the side. Now we're going to remove this brace, uh, just three 15 millimeter bolts. Next, we're going to disconnect this connector right here. and put the brace off to the side. Now we're going to remove this 13 millimeter bolt right here. And put this aside. Our friends, the vehicle engineers, made a battery that's not very accessible. So the fuse box is going to have to be moved as well. To remove the fuse box, it's two 12 millimeter bolts right on the top here. They're not very tight, so it's not very hard to get them off. We're not actually gonna remove the fuse box. We just want it loose so we can pull it out of the way while we remove the battery. All right. And now, we rotate the battery towards the driver's side. And pull up. Look at that. Strong like bull. Now we wanna move the coolant bottle out of the way. So we're just gonna remove these two 10 millimeter bolts right here. and then we'll just put the coolant bottle aside over here. All right, now we're gonna remove this hose bracket right here, and this is just one 13 millimeter bolt. And we'll just push that aside. And now we're gonna loosen the four 10 millimeter bolts on the water pump pulley. We're gonna loosen the 15 millimeter bolt on the belt tensioner. To loosen the belt, we'll take a 3 8 inch breaker bar, insert it into the tensioner next to the pulley, and then we'll pull forward towards the front of the car. Insert it into the tensioner near the pulley, and pull forward. Now we just slide the belt off the pulley. Now we remove the four 10 millimeter bolts on the water pump pulley.
And if we're lucky, the pulley's just gonna pop right off. But if it doesn't, we might need to shimmy it back and forth or pry on it a little bit. It wasn't so bad. Now it's just five 13 millimeter bolts and the water pump comes off. What do you think the hardest part of this whole repair is? I don't know, standing around and watching? <laughs> yeah. That was so good. Sometimes the water pump might stick. This one's ready to just fall off. I swear we didn't cheat. Now we're gonna remove the old gasket. It's not in the worst shape, but we're not gonna reuse it. We don't wanna risk any leaks on the new water pump. Okay, we have our new parts here. We have a brand new water pump and a brand spanking new gasket. Anytime you're putting a gasket in, make sure that the surface on the part, as well as the engine itself, is completely free of debris. And make sure your gasket is free of any defect. Often water pumps aren't what fail. It's the gasket that fails that cause the leak. Typically you'll go in there and rather than just change the gasket, you're gonna do the water pump while you're in there. Anyway. Time to install the new water pump. When you install it, this round part is on the bottom and the tab on the gasket goes on the top. Like that. To make things easier, I'm gonna start with one of the bolts through the hole in the water pump and the gasket. Now we're gonna to torque the bolts to 11 foot-pounds and we're gonna go in a star pattern just to make sure everything's snugged down uniformly. Now we put the water pump pulley back on. And put in the four 10 millimeter bolts, just finger tight. Now we use our 3 8 inch breaker to release the belt tension and then slide the belt onto the water pump pulley. And now we'll tighten the 15 millimeter bolt on the belt tensioner. Torque the four 10 millimeter bolts to 18 foot pounds. Now we reconnect this bracket. On the left hand side, there's a little tab that goes right in here. Now we're gonna put the coolant bottle back. Now the battery. Two 10 millimeter bolts. There's almost no torque at all in these. Now we reinstall the battery bracket. And now we reconnect the battery. Do you always reconnect the positive terminal first? Yeah, you always want to go to positive first and then the negative afterward. And now the brace. Long bolt goes in the back. Finally, this connector.
Now we insert a funnel and then we're going to start pouring in our coolant. This is a pre-mix Dexcool compatible coolant. And one tip, hold the jug sideways like this so you don't get the fluid surging and pouring all over the place. Now we'll just wait a second and some air will probably come out of the system. If you want, you can also gently squeeze a hose, uh, not too hard, or you might spray coolant out. And this can also help get some air out of the system. You can see the bubbles there. And we'll top it up a bit more. For the next step, we're gonna have to start the engine. So we're gonna take the coolant filler cap, we're gonna put it on, but we're only gonna engage it a little bit, just enough that it doesn't come off. Okay, we're gonna start getting the air out of the system. This time we're gonna start the car and run it at 2,500 RPM for 40 seconds. Okay, now we're gonna shut the car off and check the coolant. Carefully remove the cap. And top up the coolant. And the cap back on, just enough to engage the threads. Okay, we got quite a bit of air out of the system. This time we're gonna start, run at 2,500 RPM. This time for 30 seconds. We're gonna carefully remove the cap again and top it up. Okay, we're gonna restart again. Got just a little bit more air out of it. This time we're gonna start and run at 2,500 RPM for 20 seconds. And we'll top it up one last time. Now we're gonna fill the coolant bottle, about 400 milliliters of coolant. Now the coolant cap goes on all the way. Remember, from this point on, the system could be under pressure, so we don't wanna take the cap off unless the engine's completely cool. Okay, we're coming down the home stretch now. We're gonna start the car, take it to 2,500 RPM until the engine comes up to temperature. That assures us that the thermostat is on. We'll also get better confirmation if the heater in fact works. So bring it up to start the car, bring it to 2,500 RPM. Okay, we have the car up to temperature now. Heater's nice and warm. So the very final step, take it to 3,000 RPM for four seconds, back to idle for four seconds. We're gonna do this three times. Okay, now, pretty simple, we're just gonna shut the car off and let the engine cool. Now everything's nice and cool. You can see the coolant level in the bottle has dropped a little bit, so we're just gonna top that up. All right, that's it, no leaks, everything's looking good. Now we'll go ahead and clear the codes. Uh, just one reminder, of course, if you do clear your codes, that's gonna reset all your emissions tests. So if you got a smog check coming up anytime soon, you might have to do some driving, maybe 45 minutes an hour around town and on the highway to gather enough data for your car to pass all the tests again. Don't forget to use your blue driver and run a smog check to see if you can go past that emission test. And also, there's tons of other great information you can find. Come see us at bluedriver.com. And of course, for this video, please like it and subscribe on our YouTube channel. And stay tuned because we always got more great stuff coming.